This story right here that I'm bringing to you has kind of been making its rounds a little bit for the last, I guess you could say, couple of days. But it really hasn't, I guess you can say, gotten that national attention like it should. And it definitely should, especially because of the conflicting stories that are coming from it. So in this picture, you see two people. On the left, you see a man by the name of Etienne Murray or Morary. And on the right, you see a man by the name of Morgan Barnhill. And basically what happened was is you had Morgan Barnhill hit Etienne Murray Morary with a shovel. He hit him so hard with this shovel that he ended up killing him. His story goes that there was a burglar coming inside of his home and he was defending himself against the burglar. And apparently the alleged burglar was Etienne. But as they continued to question him or maybe not question him, eventually his story ended up falling apart. And then his true motives ended up coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and read this article that's coming from Atlanta Black Star that was posted April 7, 2000. 22 <clears throat> excuse me a $500,000 bond is set for a mobile Alabama man who police say killed another man by hitting him over the head with a shovel and pipe prosecutors on the case told a judge at a bond hearing they believe the assault might have been racially motivated the attacker was white the victim was black Morgan Daniel Barnhill age 27 and that is a struggling 27 Originally told the officers in Mobile Police Department he struck a man because he thought an unknown burglar was breaking into a shed on March 29th. However, authorities say an investigation swiftly uncovered the man who knew the person he bashed in the head with two sharp and heavy objects. It was his neighbor, a 25-year-old black man by the name of Etienne Murray. An officer close to the case said, through an investigation, it was determined that the alleged victim, Barnhill, intentionally misled officers about an attempted burglary on the 4300 block of Windy Hill Circle East. Detectives discovered several inconsistencies in Barnhill's statement. The source continued. In determined, he filed a false report claiming an unknown male was attempting to break into a shed on his property. Barnhill assaulted Murray with a garden shovel and a pipe and waited hours before calling authorities to report his injuries or the alleged crime he said was he, he was preventing. Murray died three days later on April 1st. Police said there was no additional details about the incident calling it an active homicide investigation. Barnhill's bail bond was set at $500,000 on April 4th. Should the bond be met, he will be required to wear an ankle bracelet and stay on house arrest. The deceased mother said the two men were friends and her son was even invited over to Barnhill's home for a barbecue. She claimed Barnhill believed Murray stole a purse from his property. WTVY reports Lindy or Linday Gale, Murray's mother, said after he beat my baby, he left him there. Didn't call for help, didn't try for help. If he would have called for help, maybe my baby would still be here. If he didn't beat him with that shovel, he most definitely would have still been here. I want him to know he has shattered my world. The bereaved mother continued. He took my baby and didn't have to do that. If he feels like my child took something from him, why not call the police? Why not handle it the right way? Why take the cowardly way out and beat my child's head and leave him there? That's because it wasn't over something that was allegedly stolen. I believe it was more than that. Like they said, it was a lot of inconsistencies with his story. Like they said, like he beat him the head over the head with a shovel and a pipe and then didn't call the police for hours. So I don't believe it was over him allegedly stealing anything or trying to steal anything. I believe that it was something else. I don't want him to die. I don't. Oh, oh I skipped the part. Uh Oh, here we go. The statement that I was waiting for that I hope I wasn't going to get. The mother says she doesn't want anything bad to happen to the man responsible for her son's death. <sighs> Uh, here we go. Here we go. I don't want him to die because I don't want any other mother feeling the pain I feel right now. Black people, why do we do this? Why? This man murdered your son for allegedly stealing or trying to steal from him, which most likely isn't true because his story kept falling apart with so many inconsist inconsistencies. And you want to come out and say, I don't. Uh, want anything bad to happen why not you don't want him to die because you don't want any other mother to feel the pain why not she took he took your son 
I don't know what it is, but let me continue. No mother should have to bury her child, especially the senseless violence like this. So how are you going to say, see, now this whole, I hate, see, I hate when black people do this, when I'm doing a story like this, and then they come in with the whole, oh, I don't want anything bad to happen to the person that did bad to my child or to my loved one. Because now that throws me off with what I'm supposed to be aiming to talk about. And now I, it's like I have to go in and start grilling the person who said it. Even though I don't want to, but I have to because this is ridiculous. This man killed your child and you want to get on the forgiveness train immediately. What is this? Remember I was telling you how the mental enslavement was worse than the physical? Here's an example of that. This is a perfect example of that. A bail bond has not been met for Barnhill and he remains incarcerated in a Mobile County Jail in Alabama. Yeah, like that just completely blew me right there. That completely threw me off with the whole forgiveness thing. I don't know why black people continue to do that, but this is unforgivable. He beat your son to death with a shovel and some and a pipe. He murdered your child and you want to say you don't want anything bad to happen to him? They're going to take those statements into consideration. So let's say for like hypothetically speaking that he walks which if even if she didn't say that that could even easily happen because look at the establishment we live in but because you put that out there if he was to walk away from this we're going to revert back to your statements when you say you didn't want anything bad to happen to him they're like okay we're just honoring your wishes so now you just let a murderer go free and you could thank yourself for giving that bs statement I just want to know, how is it that people who are not family to these victims care more about what happens to the person who did, who, who the perpetrator, than it is the actual family member of the deceased? I'm not, I don't understand. Can somebody out there please help me realize and understand what is really going on? How is it that I want something bad to happen to this, this thing that looked like it came straight out of the Goonies? Why do I feel like I want more to happen to him than the mother of the victim she says out of her mouth i don't want anything bad to happen to him like what why and then she said because she doesn't want another mother to experience the loss of a child like she did oh well that's just the way of the world you know the laws of attraction man like i said this completely threw me off that response and that statement right there i'm supposed to be going in on the perpetrator killing this man yet i'm going in on the deceased's mother <sighs> but you know what usually you know like a lot of people like who come to when we do these commentaries whenever we hear a family member come out with that forgiveness crap we usually leave it alone after that so I'm about to do the same thing. Good luck and Godspeed. If if this turns out the way that I think it will, we'll just revert back to, again, like I said earlier, to what the mother said. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Okay. There it is. If nothing bad happens to this, this, she, uh, she has no one to blame but herself. Because apparently she doesn't want justice for her deceased child, her deceased son, apparently. I guess everyone doesn't have the same spirit of, the, you know, or the fighting spirit like Ahmaud Arbery's mother. Not everyone can be a Wanda Cooper Jones, clearly.